Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please stand for the national anthem sung by Sergeant First Class Andre McRae, followed by the invocation delivered by Father Ken Nielsen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red flare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I was just dared to say but I think I'm seeing stars. <clears throat> uh, four stars is a quite a few stars there, but uh, Amy is still way above your pay grade. <laughs> and uh, last night we heard some interesting stories around a campfire uh, with chaplain's confidentiality. I'm, I won't break that, sir, but I do want to tell one quick story. Back when we were deployed in Afghanistan, uh, a soldier came to my office. He was uh, very distressed because he had not gotten his BAH for a year and a half. His family was being evicted from their apartment, taking their car away, and this was just horrible for him. So I marched him straight over to the colonel's office, and within three or four days, I think it was, that soldier had his money because you took care of him, sir. So we're glad that you're raising up and, and going to be in a position to help a lot more soldiers. So God bless you in that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father of us all, remind us today that your presence remains forever constant in our lives and in our work. We thank you for your presence and guidance that you've given to the work and leadership of James Mingus in the past. We pray for a renewal of your spiritual blessings upon him as he begins a new assignment of service. Give him a share in your wisdom and your strength so that he may give wise and strong care to those under his charge. We pray, your Holy Spirit, to assist Amy in her wisdom and guidance in all the work she does. Bless all of the men and women in our nation's army. Inspire them with the energy of your love to be and do their best, not just as military personnel of our country pledged to defend her freedom, but especially as people of God who are dedicated to manifesting your love. Make us a nation of people strong in our resolve to help others know true freedom and lasting peace. Finally, we pray earnestly for all those who are deployed throughout the world and for their families and friends back home. Help them all to know and feel your presence at their side. We pray always confident of your answers to our prayers. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. Lieutenant General Mingus is now presenting flowers to Mrs. Mingus and Miss Zoe Mingus. Lieutenant General Mingus is now presenting coins to Mr. Nathan Mingus and Mr. Luke Mingus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the host for today's ceremony, the 41st Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy A. George.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Great to see everyone. Um, Honorable Jake Sullivan, Honorable John Finer, Honorable Liz Sherwood Randall, my battle buddy, Secretary of the Army, uh, Chairman, and uh, Shireen, I want to thank you all for coming. Chairman, thanks for releasing Jim. We've been very excited to get him. He's a couple months late. I know you had nothing to do with that. Um, but appreciate uh, you letting him be here. Chairman Millie, um, Holly Ann, great to, have, great to have you here. Sasha, going down the whole front row here, and, uh, and the vice chairman. And we got, uh, I think, most of the OSD and joint staff um, that's with us as well. So we could probably get a good uh, J Rock or a DMAG going right after this if anybody's interested um, to doing that. So I want to welcome some other folks. Um, Medal of Honor recipient, Flo Groberg, where are you at, Flo? Raise your hand. Great to see you, brother. Uh, we got uh, Pam Griffin um, and her kids that are here with us, a Gold Star wife and a close friend of Jim and Amy's. Um, Pam's husband was the Command Sergeant Major when he was killed in action um, in 4-4. So, um, Pam, great to have you here with us. We got a lot of other, uh, a lot of, a lot of other distinguished guests, and we really appreciate uh, you being here. Um, and you're welcome for whatever meeting you got out of this afternoon. Um, so we had one, we had one wish on our on our Christmas list um, this year in the Army, and that was to get Jim uh, Mingus uh, confirmed as our vice. And we talked about that a lot. And the Senate did just that for us on December 18th, and it made me think that we were not uh, greedy enough. We should have added something else on our list, like a budget. Um, and I'm hoping we get that. But this is, this is a great day for our Army. Um, and it's funny, I think a lot of people outside of the Pentagon don't really know what the vice does, what service vices do. It's not a public-facing job, um, not a glamorous job, um, but I can tell you, and I know everybody here that served a, a day or two in the Army um, can tell you that pretty much the every, everything the Army does, the vice touches. The vice runs the Army day to day, all the behind the scenes efforts, diving in and making things happen across the Army staff, OSD, and the joint team, and we haven't had a vice for nearly five months. Of course, the Army hasn't stopped running. There have been a lot of dedicated and capable people that have been stepping in and picking up the slack. And Walt Pyatt uh, is one of those folks. And I want to thank you, Walt. I know we'll get an opportunity tomorrow. Farewell, you and Cynthia. But we're a big organization, over a million people in the total force, and we've got troops deployed around the world, I think 140,000 of them at last count, and there's a lot going on. We need a vice. And Jim, you are the perfect person for the job, a mission-focused warfighter and a gifted leader, and you're coming to us after being the J3 and the director of the Joint Staff so you know a thing or two about running complex teams and handling a whole lot of stakeholders. And as you know, too, you do get a window now um, and a bathroom. There's some other great things that, that come with that. And for my part, I'm looking forward to having Jim down the hall because he's a great teammate. Jim and I have some history together. We both commanded 4-4 IBCT, the Mountain Warriors at Fort Carson. And if I recall directly or correctly, our dog Louise was the official welcome wagon for the Ming guy when they moved in next door. Uh, we served together closely in CENTCOM, um, known then as SADCOM, because most of us showed up at the headquarters before sunup, and we rarely got out of that building before the sun was down, and that was throughout the year, no matter how long the days were. Um, SOCOM was happy calm, and I'll let you figure out why that was. Jim, I'll never forget the 0440 hour workouts at the McDill gym or how happy we were to stop and drink a pint of Guinness on our way back from trips to the, from the Middle East in Shannon, Ireland. And I promise I won't tell the Ambien story unless someone corners me over a beer later this evening at your house. 
and we toiled a good bit together here in the Pentagon, again, also showing up early in the morning and leaving late. Jim, I know our teams and our wives are hoping that's one habit that we can break um, in the next couple of years. You are a motivating battle buddy, and we're really looking forward to pinning this fourth star on you. But before we do that, I want to spend some time talking about some people in this room without whom, and I think Jim will wholeheartedly agree with me on this, Jim would not be standing here today. First, and most importantly, is his bride, Amy. Amy and Jim met when he was out at Fort Liberty as a captain. His first stint at the center of the universe, and all the Army folks here will understand what that means. And now they've been married 28 years, celebrating 29 later this year. Amy, thank you for your decades of service you have already dedicated to our troops working with the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors and other nonprofit and family organizations. You've had an indelible impact on every unit and community that you have touched. But even more impressive and impactful is the family you have built with Jim. 22 moves, 13 deployments, and through it all, you guys have remained a strong team and raised three wonderful kids. And I know, Amy, that you have been the glue to that entire operation. So, thank you. And to the Team Mingus kids who are here uh, today, Nate, who's been working across the United States doing a bit of traveling and adventuring, Zoe, who just graduated from App State with honors. Congratulations, Zoe. And Luke, who's in college in Florida, but up for the holidays. And I will tell you, Luke, I saw that brand new Army Green Toyota Tacoma, and I'm very jealous of that. I know that as Army kids, you've all gone through a lot of schools, lived in a lot of places, but I'm sure that experience has helped mold you into the confident young adults you are, each of you finding your own unique place in the world. Great to have you here. And of course, now that you're all grown and out of the house, the Army finally decided to keep your mom and dad in the same place for a while and give your parents a big set of quarters with plenty of bathrooms. So hopefully you're able to enjoy that for a couple of days. We also have Jim's parents joining us virtually from Missouri. So welcome to Maurice and Brooke Mingus. And Amy's parents, Herb and Judy Hedgepath, who are tuned in from North Carolina. We are so pleased you join us today for this remarkable achievement that belongs to both Jim and Amy. We also have some other family and friends here and dialing in that I'd like to recognize Jim's brother, Sean Mingus. Where are you at, Sean? All right, um, from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Jim's lifelong friends, Mar Martin Rudebuck and Tim Hebert. I know I saw Tim, um, both retired from the US Army. Great that you could join us. Sisters Debbie and Mickey and brother-in-law Bob that are watching virtually and the Mountain Warrior and all American families. And now to Jim. If there's nothing else you know about him, the fact that he spent much of his childhood in a small town in Iowa should tell you a lot. They raise good stock out there, <laughs> Chairman. We were just talking. We're trying to move this whole Boston crowd more to, the, more, to the, more to the Midwest. And I can tell you that cleaning barns, walking beans, and detasseling corn is good for you. So. <laughs> Jim enlisted first in the Iowa National Guard in 1981, like his dad, who retired from the Iowa Guard as a sergeant first class. Jim went on to commission from Winona State University in Minnesota and later transitioned to the active component as an infantry officer. And now we're talking nearly four decades of warfighting experience with the 18th Airborne Corps, the Ranger Regiment, on the CENTCOM staff as the CAG Director XO and in the J-5 as the Director of the Mission Command Center of Excellence, in the Ivy Division leading 4th Brigade and as the DCG for maneuver, and then leading the storied 82nd Airborne Division. Above all, Jim is a proven leader. If you add up all of his time in command, two companies, one detachment, two battalions, a brigade combat team, and the 82nd Airborne Division, it comes to about 156 months, or 13 cumulative years of command time. And that experience is critical. Everything we do in the Pentagon 
supports the war fighters and commanders that are out there in our formations. Jim, no doubt you were coming at just the right time. The Army, and I would argue the entire military, is facing some headwinds right now. The world is more volatile than I've ever known it, and our adversaries are going, growing more capable all the time. But none of this is new. Our Army has been through it before, and we know how to adapt and to thrive. And what you add to the team is going to make us exponentially better. I served with few other leaders that understand the complexity of warfighting like you do. You are an absolute expert. And I've served with few other leaders that have your work ethic and stamina. No one enjoys 20-hour workdays, but few others can match your commitment to get the job done when that is what is required. And finally, you are the consummate teammate. I've watched for many years how you make everyone around you better. I know we're going to be better every day by having you on our team. I know that you will help keep us focused on our warfighting mission and help us ruthlessly prioritize resources so that we can transform in contact and stay ready for whatever the future holds. Welcome aboard and congratulations, my friend. Let's get you promoted. General Mingus and Mrs. Amy Mingus will now join General George with their children, Miss Zoe Mingus and Mr. Luke Mingus. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of James J. Mingus. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the United States Army from Lieutenant General to General by order of the Secretary of the Army. Mrs. Mingus and Luke Mingus will now replace the jacket rank. Miss Zoe Mingus will now replace the garrison cap rank. General George will now present the promotion certificate to General Mingus. <laughs> General George will now administer the oath to General Mingus thus formally swearing in General Mingus as the 39th Vice Chief of Staff of the Army.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 39th Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, General James J. Mingus. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, yesterday, you're going to be able to Probably happy about this, but uh, we have the newest three-star in the Army. Where Tony Hill were yet? So Tony got promoted to three-star. He's going to be the G2, and I thought he gave probably the best. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> best speech that I've heard in a very, very long time. And the best part it was three minutes. So it's amazing what they can do with video CGI stuff. So what we've done, we took Tony's speech, we put my head on it, and we're just going to roll that and then we'll be drinking beer here in less than three minutes. So if we could go ahead and, okay, we really didn't do that. But Happy New Year and welcome, and know that Amy and I are hum humbled, honored, and thrilled about this moment and the opportunity to continue to serve this great Army. Amy and I learned a long time ago, we love to make our plans for this life, but ultimately the Lord's purpose prevails. Our plan was to be fishing right now, uh, but we are honored uh, to be able to continue to serve. Chief. Thanks for today, for presiding over the ceremony, the kind remarks for your and Patty's friendship, and most importantly, the trust that you've given us. We are finally neighbors. Madam Secretary, thank for you as well for your trust and confidence in Amy and I, and we look forward to what is to come. Uh, before I forget, I uh, also want to thank the protocol team and everybody else that had a part in putting this together. Uh, for those what, I mean, the holds only got lifted, what, two weeks ago? And they pulled this together over the holidays. So my personal thanks to everybody that had a part in put, putting this together. To Under Secretary Camarello, my new range buddy, I've gotten to know you in the various forums over the last year or so, and I am thrilled to know we'll be sitting side by side in the coming months, making the Army and the Joint Force a better place. For Jake, John, and Liz, I know this is a break for you, but it means so much that you are all here for this. General and Mrs. Brown, Admiral Grady, I know just firsthand how incredibly busy you are, but thanks for taking the time. General and Mrs. Milley, many of us owe so much to both of you, and thanks for being here. My dear friend, General Pyatt, we will honor you tomorrow, but a special shout out. We could easily be training places here today, but thanks for your nearly 30 years of, 40 years of service to our nation. To the other distinguished guests, thanks for making the journey. We've got folks from Seattle, Texas, Michigan, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. You've traveled the continent, and Amy and I are thrilled you're here. But today is really an acknowledgement that this is a team sport and no one does this alone. And Amy and I are no exception. And so I will spend my time recognizing and thanking the special folks that are here today. To Rain, or the Chief already talked about my mom and dad who are watching live, but it was 42 years ago and one week exactly uh, that Private Mingus walked down, I was 17 with my dad and entered into the uh, Iowa National Guard at Spencer. And it's, can't thank you enough for your love, devotion, work ethic, and sense of service to others. To my siblings, Sean and Karen, who are here today, my sister, Debbie, her husband, Bob, Mickey, also virtual, we have, they, they have walked this journey with us, good times and bad, but have always been there for us. To Amy, Nathan, Zoe, and Luke, this has just been much as your path as it has been mine, but you didn't choose it but you've been there with me every step of the way. You've given so much, and I can't thank you enough for allowing me to continue to wear this jersey just for a little bit longer. I'm proud of you all, love you very much, and no cheesy songs for you today. Um, for Team Hedgepeth that are also out there recognized earlier, but uh, Amy's family, they're all watching. We love you, thanks for, for tuning in. To Pam, Dane, Kylie, Team Griffin, Gold Star family, and our family, your presence today is priceless, and I know Kevin is here. To Flo, my adopted son and brother, thanks for making the trek and being part of this family. Um, Mike Fulmer, he's not everybody in this room knows, but there's a good chunk of folks that know. He's a mutual friend of uh, the Chief and I's and, and Patty. Uh, he literally was in the O'Hare Airport. In fact, I think he's watching from the O'Hare Airport, but uh, his plane broke on the way here, so he wasn't able to make it. So Mike, thanks for, for your love and friendship over the years. To my friends, I'll start with Joel Kickbush, Minnesota, yanked me out of the dorms 40 years ago. He's my track buddy and lifelong friend. Thanks for being here. And yes, he has lots of stories that he will probably share later tonight. 
Martin Reedabu, Tom Hebert, Forever Friends, started in 1984. Martin and I were Ranger buddies, roommates in each other's weddings, formed the Martin, Tom, Allen, Jim Club, and have been a deep part of our lives ever since. And truth is, all things before Amy and Vianette, Tom, if it wasn't for you, this would have been a short career a long time ago. To Rob Baker, my first company commander as a lieutenant, thanks for being here. You were instrumental in keeping me on the right path at a time in Germany when standards were questionable, but you showed me and many others what right looked like. Chief mentioned this, but uh, our life as we know it today started at Fort Bragg, then now Liberty, and that's where Amy and I met. We got married there. Is really the foundation of who we are today. It was the first time we were introduced to excellence, pride, and what it meant to train to standard, maintain to standard, and be ready tonight mentality. The likes of Tim Scully, Lloyd Austin, George Crocker, Hugh Shelton, Mike Steele, Dan McNeil, John Abizay, Dave Petraeus, Danson Don Bontley, my first first sergeant, Mike Moore and Steve England, all were shining examples uh, to Amy and I in what Wright looked like then too. It was also there where we met Rick and Linda Tufts, who were here, Steve and Bethany Thomas, been with us for decades now. Then we went into kind of our dark side of our life between 2000 and 2010, where I joined another side of the Army and the Joint Force it was met almost immediately with 9-11, many deployments, birth of two of our three kiddos, but was also what honed what it meant to be the best part of the best team in the world. We went, we did, and were exposed to things I never thought possible. 25 to 30 high-end operations every night across the enterprise. I was lucky to work with the likes of Tony Thomas, Craig Nixon, Joe Votel, Del, Del Daly, Frank Kearney, Stan McChrystal, Bill McRaven, and many more. But most significant and impactful to me was the quality of the senior NCOs in that organization, represented by my nephew, Staff Sergeant Mingus, today, and what truly sets our military aside from all others. The likes of Command Sergeant Major Big Doug Greenway, Hardy, Merritt, Hall, Walker, Ferrucci, Burgoyne, Kirkover, Reitmeyer, Bishop, Day, and Griffin, and thousands of others. Watching, learning, and being coached by NCOs like this and across our formation has been the honor of a lifetime. They are why we get up every day, we set the policies, they enforce it, and they are why the U.S. military will win every time. A couple others Amy and I want to recognize from our Mountain Warrior All-American and other Time Horizons, Clinton Lori Taylor, Todd Heiser, and Linda Heisner, Whit Wright, Eric Johnson, his wife, Mark and Lauren O'Donnell, Mike and Rachel Pappas. Father, thank you for coming all the way from Michigan. Um, great to have you here. The Purdy's, all of you have been a deep part of Amy and I's lives, and it means the world that you are here to share this. Finally, as I said in the beginning, we plan in the good Lord smiles, and after 40 years of avoiding the Pentagon, my dear friend, General Milley, decided to bring us here. And 40 months later, it was one <laughs> heck of a ride. You, I think you told Amy, you said maybe 12 to 15 months, but it was, it was eye-opening. But it did introduce us to a world of people that allowed us to grow in ways we never thought possible, good and bad. Working with the Joint Staff, no doubt the most talented assemblage of folks anywhere in the world, our OSD and White House colleagues, it is, has been a laboratory of learning. Jake, John, and Liz, thanks for being here. Kelly and Ron, who represent, there's so many from OSD, I will not mention them all, but you represent that amazing team. Thanks to you and the dozens, the vice squad that's here for being such great teammates and friends. I will cherish what I have learned from all of you. Sasha, we were just hoping Miles was gonna be here. He would have made the day. Um, and DA, where you at representing the, you, you now have the moniker of Director for Life. <laughs> but thanks to you and to the entire joint staff for ensuring that someone is always on watch, and in every case, no matter the time or day, when the military advice is rendered on some of the most consequential decisions this globe has to face, it is sound, it is well thought out, and it is reason. In closing, Madam Secretary Chief, the entire Army team, Amy and I are committed to your vision, helping you drive change, taking care of our people, modernizing in contact, but most important, ensuring the Army remains the most professional, lethal, feared land force in the world today, tomorrow, and into the future. God bless and Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and join in singing the Army song led by Sergeant First Class McRae. The words can be found on the back of your program. March along, 
sing a song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, you are invited to congratulate General and Mrs. Mingus in the receiving line. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>